Hello everybody, it's Poet WP. Um, this is a continuation, this is the second video, uh, part two of uh, the story and the poem. I'm going to share my father's war. Also, in this portion, I'm going to show you some more materials that influenced me greatly as a young man and as a young person. Uh, <clears throat> and that is two of the songs from... Uh, these two excellent Metallica albums. Uh, I'll go over that after I read the poem and after I finish the story. And then I'll go over this uh, passage, page from this comic book, which is an excellent comic book. I highly recommend. It's probably my favorite comic book series, short series, Born. Um, oh, excuse me. <sighs> I try not to yawn too much. Okay. <clears throat> So, where I left off in the story was there, where uh, the kids all got up there and uh, read their poems, you know, and it was kind of cheesy and stereotypical, you know, pro-war, you know, worship the flag, God and your country are synonymous kind of sentiment. And, uh, you know, and I wasn't even paying attention at this point in class, as always. I was just in my own little world, writing my own little thing or reading my own thing, you know, just kind of zoned out as always it was. And uh, then the teacher said, well, she said, oh, excuse me, so there's one poem that I read that really moved me and really made me think, and I wanted to share it with all of you, and then at this, at this point, so still, I'm not paying attention, uh, I didn't think it, she was going to read my poem, of course, and uh and she starts with the title and you know my father's war and I, I was shocked I looked up I looked around the room as she read my poem and uh, looked at the reactions of uh, of the, the my fellow classmates when she read the poem and this is the poem that she read <clears throat> it's called my father's war we went together one night on a drunken binge, the six of us, full of bourbon and spite. I went to my brother's funeral the day before, and I could think, all I could think about was how much I wanted to kill. I envisioned in my mind my death in a foreign land, and I had no problem with it. Signed the contract, nine months in exotic Vietnam. I could not wait to get a knee deep in Charlie's blood. I took a bullet. Hot, stinging pain shooting through the side. I can't recall if I died or evolved. Death and life, pain and mind, hate and fear. Strolling through the jungle, a missionary for death. Fighting a nation for a country that forgot its principles. Freedom is what you make for yourself, but I'm supposed to deliver it to them with a bullet. Can you justify all this death? All I can do is confront it or become it. So, <clears throat> after the teacher finished the poem, I was... Excuse me again. I was looking around the classroom, <clears throat> and I was astonished. I mean... <clears throat> My fellow classmates were were flabbergasted. They were they were sh they were completely shocked. I, I even <laughs> I recall I, I even heard uh, one girl that was in like the front row. She went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like at the end of the poem. And uh, and I mean I looked across the room and just like you know, every one of them's jaws were on the floor. They were completely flabbergasted. And uh, then the teacher said, um, she said, would the person who wrote that poem like to be identified? And, um, you know, in that split second, I made a decision. For a split second, I considered, well, you know, I could raise my hand and share my feelings and thoughts and talent with the class. But then another thought occurred to me right after that thought, which was, you know... It would really give me a heck of a kick, and it would be a big thrill to me 
if I didn't identify myself, and it was just a big mystery to them, and they never knew, really, who wrote the poem. And they could always wonder, who wrote that? And I chose the latter. It was way more appealing to me to uh, the, the latter the latter sentiment. <laughs> Which is uh, also why you don't see my face in my videos. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> then after the class was over, the teacher, who was a great teacher, by the way, who's an English teacher, she uh, pulled me aside at the end of class and she asked me, she said, uh, said, why didn't you, uh, why didn't you want to identify yourself? <clears throat> you know, that was a great poem. Why didn't you want to claim it? And yeah, I said, just you know, without missing a beat, just kind of off the top of my head, uh, I said, well, you know, all that matters is what the message is. It doesn't matter who the messenger is. <clears throat> and then she kind of smiled. And um, said, well, uh, I just wanted to say I really appreciate the poem you wrote, and I enjoyed reading it. And I was like, hey, thanks. And I was kind of shocked, you know. Uh, it wasn't very often that teachers expressed such approval, at least not to me, because I was so disengaged from the whole process anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's my story about my father's war. And now I'll go over some of these lyrics. And look at this album cover. This says it all right here. Master of Puppets, Metallica. The Hands, the Strings, Soldier's Graveyard. I'm going to go over this. These lyrics really shaped me, really shaped my views about war. When I was reading, I would, as a kid, I would listen to the music. Well, as a young man, you know, 11, 12 and on, I'd listen to this music. And uh, read the lyrics and analyze it. And, you know, like, want to deeply get into it. <laughs> Bodies fill the fields I see, hungry heroes end. No one to play soldier now, no one to pretend. Running blind through killing fields, bread to kill them all. Victim of what said should be, a servant till I fall. Soldier boy, made of clay, now an empty shell. Twenty-one, only son, but he served us well. Bread to kill, not to care, do just as we say. Finished here, greetings death, he's yours to take away. Back to the front, you will do what I say when I say back to the front. You will die when I say you must die back to the front. You coward, you servant, you blind man. Barking of machine gun fire does nothing to me now. Sounding of the clock that ticks, get used to it somehow. More a man, more stripes you bear, glory seeker trends. Bodies fill the fields I see, the slaughter never ends. And then this is the repeating of the verse. Why am I dying? Kill, have no fear, lie, L live off lying. Hell, hell is here. I was born for dying. Life planned out before my birth. Nothing could I say. Had no choice to see myself molded day by day. Looking back, I realize nothing have I done. Left to die with only friend. Alone I clenched my gun. And then the chorus. Back to the front. So yeah. You can see how such brutal honesty about the true realities of war can really leave an impression on somebody. <clears throat> Especially because, you know, like I said in the previous video, I naturally had compassion. You know, this war, you know, it's like murder on a mass scale to me. I mean, you kill for duty, you kill for God, you kill for fun. Regardless of why you kill, it all ends up with uh, the same results, and that's uh, death and suffering. So, 
My mission in life is anti-war. And the greatest anti-war song ever written, in my opinion, is this one right here, this gem. And for all of you who haven't seen the epic, mind-blowing video, one by Metallica, what are you doing with your lives? As soon as you're done with this video, go look it up immediately and watch it. It's, it's amazing. One. I can't remember anything. Can't tell if this is true or dream. Deep down inside I feel to scream. This terrible silence stops me. Now that the war is through with me. I'm waking up I cannot see. That there's not much left of me. Nothing is real but pain now. Hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please, God, wake me. Back in the womb, it's much too real. In pumps life that I must fill. But can't look forward to reveal. Look to the time when I live. Fed through the tube that sticks in me. Just like a wartime novelty. Tied to machines that make me be. Cut this life off from me. Hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please, God, wake me. Now the world is gone. I'm just one. Oh, God, help me. Hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please, God, help me. Darkness imprisoning me, all that I see, absolute horror. I cannot live, I cannot die, trapped in myself, body my holding cell. Landmine has taken my sight, taken my speech, taken my herring, taken my arms, taken my legs, taken my soul, left me with life in hell. If that doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. I mean, look at this artwork, which I love also. These are my two favorite Metallica albums. Probably my two favorite Metallica songs. Lady Justice being crumbled apart, being torn down, as her scales of justice are overpoured with money. Just like today. <laughs> so, <clears throat> now I'll go over the... Uh, the Born comic. <clears throat> and like I said, this is probably my favorite of all like four part small mini series comics. This is the, uh, I'm all, this is like of the Punisher series. It's like a vein, uh, an offshoot of the Punisher. Uh, I'm also a Punisher fan, but this is my favorite series. There's only four parts, but it's excellent. This is like the Vietnam, this is like the origin story before the origin story of the Punisher. This is like, <clears throat> tells the story of how he kind of like ended up on the spiritual path of becoming the Punisher. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, and, and this is so powerful. Like, this is literally the most powerful thing I've ever read in a, an adult graphic novel comic book. But then again, I'm not well versed. I've only read like, I don't know, you know a few compared to like true comic book geeks. But anyway, um... <clears throat> Yeah, and this came out in 2003, right as the Iraq War was ramping up. And then, I know, I, I see who wrote this thing. Anyway, maybe I'll try and find it and credit him in the, uh, in the credits, in the description. But um, when the writer who wrote this, I'm sure he wrote this, he's writing this about Vietnam. But I'm sure when he wrote it, he wrote it as a message to the public that uh, this also applies to what's going on, what was going on then in 2003 when everybody when the government was rat, ramping up for the Iraq war which was just a goddamn travesty and just 2 million people died in Iraq 250,000 civilians and a lot of them women and children it was all for nothing it was bullshit and it was evil and uh, so you know that's what he was trying to say with this message here it was it's applied in Vietnam and it applied in 2003 right when the Iraq war was ramping up that was the cultural relevant, uh, relevance of when this was issued was uh, came out. So here we go. Here's a shot of the soldier. There is a great beast loose in the world of men. 
It awoke in dark times to fight a terrible enemy. It stormed through, Fr through Europe, across the far Pacific, and crushed the evil that it found there underfoot. But when it was victorious, when the crooked cross and the rising sun were done with, the great beast's keepers found that it would not go back to sleep. The beast has many heads, and on its heads are written names. Lockheed, Bell, Monsanto, Dow, Grumman, Colt, and many more. And they are very, very hungry. So the great beast must be fed. And every generation our country goes to war to do just that. A war for war's sake, usually. And one that could have been avoided. But there must be blood in extraordinary quantities. And whether it is foreign or American is of no consequence at all. And so today, at Firebase Valley Forge, our turn has finally arrived. Today is the day we feed the beast. So, call your politicians and tell them that uh, don't go to war with Iran. Review my previous videos. And, uh, yeah, that's a horrible idea. That would, like, throw the world into cataclysm. They need to end the wars. You know, because it's like, it's like Gandhi said, you know, if the, an eye for an eye would leave the whole world blind. And, um... Yeah, so, in closing, I would like to quote another lyric, as is precedent. Uh, even though I haven't been doing it, but this is a, in poetry videos, but this is a poetry sp speech story mix video, so I'm going to do a lyric. And this is from one of my absolute favorite bands, probably top three favorite, Smashing Pumpkins, from the Masterpiece album, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Another one of their best albums is um, Siamese Dream. I highly recommend them both. They're amazing. But I would like to quote the song XYU in saying, And into the eyes of a jackal I say, Kaboom! See you next time, my friends.